Hi, this is Ron Nutter, and welcome to another edition of Tech Bites with Ron Nutter. If you've been watching my channel today, this is about take for uh, anything that can go wrong has gone wrong. What we're going to be dealing with today is getting USB support to work within Windows 10 under VirtualBox. And this is going to apply to the other to all of the, the VMs that you're going to do this with because I got blindsided because I've worked with VirtualBox for several years. And in the past, you plugged it in and it worked. Well, for some reason, they made an improvement. And I, I, based on what I saw today, I think I'm understanding why that you have to specifically enable USB support for a particular VM. And the more I get into it, the more I like it. Because if you saw my earlier streaming attempts, at one point I lost the camera. At one point, other things happened. So that I'm, I've, I've got a, a better feel for how the USB support can work because some things you just have to get into a real world situation. So anyway, everybody who's been watching the channel, thank you. Those who have subscribed, thank you. If you've clicked like on a video, thank you folks. It really means a lot to me because I'm doing this, trying to, to help you and hopefully we can all have some fun in the process. Everything I talk about, whether it's a USB to serial adapter or a, an SD card reader, I've got links to those in the show notes. So if you don't have one of those and would like to follow along with this, oh, and also let me re carefully reach over here because it's, it's hooked up to the system right now. I've actually got an SSD drive that's running all of my virtual box stuff. So, uh, I'm, I'm living the life as they say. So let's go on over here and let's start the process. Now, where I got challenged is in the past, you plugged in at work. And for example, okay, I'm going to take a little USB reader and, or USB drive rather, and we'll plug it in. And one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. You see, it's not working. It's not coming up. And this is what I got caught is I didn't expect this to happen. So we'll go over here to machine settings. Now, some of what I'm going to show you is grayed out. So you'll have to do some of this with the VM shutdown. So we'll go over here to ports, USB. You will need to check enable USB controller. And I would leave it set at USB 3.0 unless you have a reason to do it otherwise. Now, to get this to work, you have two options. You can either click on the top one, which just puts a default rule of in there, allow everything to come in. So that that's the simplest way to do it. I'm going to do it a little differently because, well, I'm streaming on the same computer I'm doing the VMs on, and that's where I got into a fighting war between VirtualBox and the application I use for doing my streaming. So we'll go the specific route, and there's and you'll you'll see a benefit why here in just a second. So if I add a u a new USB filter. So, and at this point it picks up a menu. So I already know the device I'm wanting to go into is the verbatim store and go because that was the one that wasn't there before. So some of this you'll have to look with the device with your particular flash driver, USB device, not plugged in. So I'll click on that and click okay. And we'll give it a couple of seconds here. Give it a couple of seconds here. Okay, well, we may have to unplug. Of course, now the Mac just complained at me because I didn't properly eject the drive. But now we should see. There we go. I'm seeing the, the, the flashing of the screen come about. So now you see under uh, disk drives, the verbatim store and go. And then you saw it show up over here. And sometimes it should automatically pop up a window that shows you everything there. So that. Okay, that you're 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 done at the point. You've got everything that you want it. So we'll eject the drive properly. I still have its tendency to just rip out and go. And this time I didn't get the message from the Mac operating system. Now we've got now still having that in place. I'm going to take my good old USB to serial adapter. And normally only if you're an IT would you need this kind of thing. But if you've got a two-way radio or other device that still expects a serial interface, you're going to need one of these. And I keep several around for a variety of reasons. So if I go to plug it in, and first you turn the connector around right, and we'll wait, we'll wait. 
Nothing's happening. So this is doing what it's supposed to. So now what I'll go in and do is go under settings and ports, USB, and I will click plus. And Sabrent is, no, it's prolific. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's prolific. This this is the a standard device. I just didn't see it at first. So if I click on prolific and click OK. Now, it may show it here in a couple of seconds, and sometimes I've had to unplug and replug the device. So that's not going to be a problem. We'll just unplug, replug, and we should see it here in just a second. There we go. There's the comms and ports piece show up, and then there's the USB to comm adapter. So you, you see at this point what is involved and it really is is very straightforward you may ask well why didn't you do this with the serial piece well that's if your host computer has serial ports on it and mac laptops don't and more and more computers from the windows side i'm seeing less and less serial ports there because the big reason early on was mouses and modems, that was the two things that generally, and early, early on, printers, I had to hook up my first printer to, as a serial device because the parallel port wasn't there and it was going to be very expensive to get one added. So you, you see where this is going. It really is, it's that straightforward. You just go in and make the setting uh, changes to do that. Now, you can probably get away, and let's, let's shift over one more timer, with putting the default rule in there, what I call the default rule. And if you go to, to ports, USB, and if you click that first one, it'll put new filter one. Now that's fine if you're not doing like I'm doing, you're streaming with the same machine that you're running the VMs on. So that probably will be fine. But if you have a situation where you are, let's say the VM you're running is a uh, requires a license key that's only on a flash drive. Well, at that point, you probably won't want that flash drive being accessed by all the VMs. So that's a reason to lock a flash drive down to a specific VM. So as you can see, very straightforward, very easy. I went into some extra details, but I, I wanted you to kind of get a whole picture of where things were going because now if you've got something that you need a Windows VM for, you've got a way to do it. And I'm running on the Windows 10, 10 eval I, at this point because I'm going to be uninstalling and reinstalling enough. I haven't made the decision if I'm going to get with the, the full licensed copy of Windows or not. But, you know, we'll we'll get there. It's all one step at a time. So, like I said before, anything that I talk about in my videos, uh, I've got links to the the rocket reader and this one, let me look, I've got two different ones here and they probably will be, let me look. Okay. Yeah. They're both the, the newer one that has the micro SD in it. So if you can save some money and get a micro SD, this reader can do both. Plus it protects the USB port on there and you can make your own USB car or USB flash drive on the fly. So I'm going to keep producing these videos. I've got another one coming up for those of you who've been thinking about going to an Android phone or just want to have a consistent user experience so that if your smartphone's not handy and you want to do the same apps and everything that you have on your smartphone but don't have the smartphone handy, I'm going to show you that in another video. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you for watching the channel, for subscribing. If you know anybody who's looking to do this, for their own smart home or think about starting one, please let them know about this channel. I greatly appreciate that. Thank you, everybody who's been giving me questions. Some of them have been real head stompers. So we'll, uh, we'll both have to learn on that one. And it's just all part of the journey. So thanks for watching the video and we'll see you the next time.